Have you ever wondered about the fact that so many people say uh, God made the world and that God is good, and yet you look at the world with cancer and with earthquakes and with war and with murders, and you wonder to yourself, that's surely a contradiction. How could a good God make such a miserable, evil world? Have you ever thought that? That's the kind of question that we're talking about on this program at this time each day. We're talking generally about the meaning of life and why we are all here. And we've come to the point where we have started to examine the explanation of the beginning of the world as it's given in a very old book that most of us have been used to regarding just as a religious myth. That is the book of Genesis in, in our Bible. And uh, yesterday we discussed the explanation of the way men and women were made that was revealed by the supreme being of the universe to that old man Moses thousands of years ago. And uh, you who re listened yesterday may remember that we talked about the fact that the supreme being behind the universe indicates to us that the reason he made us was because he actually wants our friendship. That's why he made us. That he made us because he wants our friendship. He wants a, a relationship with us. He wants our company. Now, that, of course, uh, immediately causes us problems because we think, oh, that is a lot of Tommy rot. How could anybody as great as the supreme being behind the universe want my company? That's unbelievable for a start. But that is what the supreme being explained through his son Jesus to us uh, about 1950 years ago, and what he explained to us uh, two or 3,000 years before that when he revealed these things to this man Moses, that the reason he made you is because he actually wants your friendship. He wants you to be with him uh, forever and to get to know him and him get to know you. That's why he made us, and that's why he made us in his image. That's why it says, you remember that, verse away at the beginning of the Bible where it says uh, God turned around to his son and said my son let us make man in our image after our likeness and that's why he made us as we mentioned yesterday with uh, a spirit uh, level of consciousness uh, a psychological level of consciousness and a physical level of consciousness that's why he made us with a spirit, that is the real you, uh, and round that a soul, which is the psychological part of you, your mind, emotions, and will, and round that again your body, your physical body, because he himself exists on three levels of consciousness. And that's why he made us with the same capacities as he himself has, so that we actually could begin to have, well, you can use the term fellowship if you want, but so that we could have interaction with him, so that we can have personal dialogue with him, so that we could have a love relationship with him. And actually, if you reflect, that does make sense, because probably the most valuable thing in your life has been the relationships you've had with other people. I mean, even if it's been with your mother or your father when you were a child, that was the most valuable part of your life. And indeed, many of us look back still to those relationships and think, yeah, that was the most real thing I ever had in my life. It was the most precious thing. And of course, many of us who are married now will attest to the fact that the most beautiful thing in our life is our love relationship with our partner. And many of us will say the same about our children and many of us about our parents will say it's the love relationship that we have. Those are the things that you die for. Those are the things that you cannot do without. You can lose money, you can lose property, you can lose future, you can lose success. But somehow, if you have still a love relationship with somebody, that seems to give a richness to life and a meaning to life. So actually, it does make sense to our own experience of life when we see that the supreme being behind the universe made us, 
not so that we could be useful to him, not so that we could make the world a better place to live in, but so that we could be his friend, so that we become like him, so that we could live with him forever and actually enjoy developing the rest of the universe together with him throughout uh, ages and ages. And that's why he made us with the capacities that he has. Now, the interesting thing is this. He did not make us unavoidably good. He didn't. He gave us a mental capacity like him, an emotional capacity like him, a volitional capacity like him, a physical capacity, a spirit capacity. But he did not make us unavoidably good. That is, he didn't make us robots. And the reason must be obvious to you. I mean, you can't have love from a robot. You can't experience love from a group of people that you've made unable to do anything else but love. You can't. I mean, you can just have a group of performing dogs, or you can have a group of puppets or marionettes, but you can't have a love relationship with people who cannot do anything else, even if they wanted to, but love you. It's as if I got you into a room with me and said, look, I have machine gunners at the doors. Now, you can't get out. Now, love me. Well, it would be impossible for you to love me. You'd say, oh, well, wait a minute. I mean, I'm being forced to love you. I, love depends on a free will. Love can only be possible in a, an area where there is free will not to love. And in fact, that's why the supreme being behind the universe gave us free wills. Now, there's no point in you and me arguing about all the uh, indications of determinism and the indications that there isn't free will in our world. Sure, there are plenty of ways in which we've subjected ourselves to all kinds of pressures that now almost force us to do certain things, but the fact remains deep, deep down in your own heart you know that you have free will. I mean, it may be pretty bedraggled, it may be pretty press pressured and pretty limited through your own fault, but you have free will. I mean, you can turn this off. Now, don't, don't turn it off, but you can turn this off if you want to. You can turn the car to the left instead of to the right. You can decide this moment to say the alphabet or not to say the alphabet. You have free will. And uh, there is clear consciousness in all of us that we are free to do what we want. Now, that's why the creator of the universe made us with free wills. He put it this way to us. He said, look, I've given you the capacities that I have, but my inner attitude, at attributes, my inner qualities, the things that make me me, the love that I have, the understanding that I have, the kindliness and gentleness that I have, that you have to choose to receive. You have to choose to receive that or choose to reject it because I'm not going to force you to live with me forever. That would be hell. I want you to choose what you're going to do. And I'm going to give you this life of 70 or 80 years to become the kind of people that would be at home with me. And if you want to do that and be that, that's good. If you don't, then it would be hell for you anyway. So really, you will end up in a hell that uh, does not have me in it. But uh, that's what he said. Now, he put it in terms of trees. And don't get all worked up about trees. This was mankind in his childhood. God isn't all tied up with apple trees and Eve eating an apple and all that stuff. He simply presented it to mankind in his intellectual childhood as a choice between two trees. And you remember the way it runs in, the, in that old book of the Bible. In Genesis 2 and verse 9, it runs like this, And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there was a tree of life, and there was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Creator said, Look, you can have a choice between those trees. He said, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now, he wouldn't have said that if man had not been free to eat of it if he wanted. So, let's talk a little more about these old trees tomorrow, and... 
you'll see they shed a lot of light on your own experience today.